Hello there, welcome to Exam AZ900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. My name is Tim Warner, I'm happy to be your instructor. This is episode 26, entitled Azure Key Vault. As you know, we're working our way through the Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain from Microsoft. In that domain, we start with Describe General Security and Network Security Features, drill into the sub-objective Describe Azure Security Features, and our specific skill today is to describe the functionality and usage of Azure Key Vault. If you're new to this series, welcome. Look over on the right side of the slide, timw.info forward slash az900. will take you out to a GitHub repo that contains an Excel file that contains the entire objective domain blueprint for the exam, and I've hyperlinked all of the episodes I've recorded thus far. Now, I get a lot of learner requests saying, why are you only such and so many episodes in? That's because I'm publishing these videos as I record them. So if you're watching this and you see that I'm only up to episode 26, that's why. Eventually, my goal, of course, is to complete all 50 episodes. With that having been said, let's continue. Azure Key Vault is an Azure cloud-hosted secret store. And secret refers to any data that you need to keep confidential, that you don't want to expose in plain text. This could be an encryption key. It could be a password or a passphrase that you use in your Azure applications. It could be digital certificates that you're using for user and or computer authentication. Azure Key Vault comes in two pricing tiers. You don't have to worry about the pricing for the AZ900 exam, but the premium tier is backed by what's called a hardware security module, or HSM. The idea with encryption is that you're dealing with very long numbers, and it can be a CPU-intensive process for sure. The lower cost Azure Key Vault uses software-based encryption technologies that are going to run slower and may not be capable of the encryption key length that you need to meet your compliance and security requirements. So you might just want to go out, just do a search for Azure Key Vault pricing, and you can price the difference between the two stock keeping units. Now, as far as daily practice goes, you may be using a password manager right now, in which case you have somewhat of an advantage in understanding Azure Key Vault. You might be familiar or use LastPass or 1Password or Apple Keychain or even Windows built-in Credential Manager. It's all the same basic idea here with Azure Key Vault, but Azure Key Vault has a neat advantage, and that is it's natively baked into the Azure platform, so you can easily integrate Azure Key Vault into all of your services. I'll show you that in the demo, and actually the next slide covers that. But in the meantime, just so you understand, the types of secrets that Azure Key Vault can store are number one, passwords, passphrases. That's pretty standard stuff. It could be confidential information like your corporate credit card number, whatever it is. Those are called secrets in Azure Key Vault nomenclature. Then there's encryption keys. You'd use this, for instance, to store API keys for Azure storage accounts, perhaps, or Azure disk encryption keys for your Windows Server and or Linux virtual machines running in Azure. And then there's digital certificates. Again, this could be something like an SSL TLS certificate that you use with some of your Azure App Service apps. It could be, as I mentioned earlier yet, user or computer authentication certificates, whatever the case may be. And the magic here with Azure Key Vault, as I said, is number one, the native integration it has with other Azure services, but also number two, how easy it is to programmatically retrieve those secrets without ever exposing the actual secret in plain text. Remember, that's our primary goal here. Now, one integration would be with the storage account. And this slide's actually cool because if you've been studying this series sequentially, they're products that you should already know a thing or two about. Remember the general purpose storage account and the fact that you've got those two access keys that represent a way to gain authorized access to the services in that storage account. Well, you can create what's called a managed Azure storage account where you can store those access keys in Azure Key Vault. And guess what? You can actually instruct Azure Key Vault to rotate and regenerate keys on your schedule. For virtual machines, you've got full disk encryption. This feature is called Azure Disk Encryption, or ADE, and those drive encryption keys very conveniently. You can place them in Key Vault. 
eVault, I want you to consider to be the default secret store that you should be using for your Azure environment. Azure SQL Database, yet another option. The data files and your transaction log files and your backup files in Azure SQL Database are all encrypted at rest. The Azure SQL feature is called Transparent Data Encryption, or TDE, and one option is for you to store those keys in Key Vault. Now let me get into the demo and I'll show you the basics of how to use Azure Key Vault. In this demonstration, I'm going to give you a whirlwind tour of Azure Key Vault functionality in Microsoft Azure. Here we are located in the Azure Management Portal, and I'm going to do a search for Key Vaults. And we'll go over to that blade, and I've already created one for our use, as you can see, called AZ900 Key Vault 01. If we go into that Key Vault, I want you to see a couple high-level points. This is most relevant for you if you're already working as an IT administrator or a developer. You've got your Access Control IAM, which is your role-based access control. And this is going to grant Azure Active Directory users and other Azure security principles access to the vault itself, but not the secrets within it. To grant access to the secrets, as you can see under settings, there's keys, secrets, and certificates. Those are handled by something called an access policy. So yes, Key Vault can be a little bit complex, but once you get the basic flow, it becomes much more straightforward. Notice that we can turn these flags on here to enable access to various deployment options. Right now, I want to make sure that the second two checks are enabled. The middle option here says Azure Resource Manager for Template Deployment. That allows us to reference Key Vault secrets in our Azure Resource Manager deployment templates and to do Azure Disk Encryption for virtual machines. And to store those encryption keys in Key Vault, you need to make sure that this third option, Azure Disk Encryption for Volume Encryption, is enabled, which it is. Let's go over to Secrets, and I'm going to create a secret right now. Let's click Generate Import called VM Admin Password. And let's say we need to deploy a virtual machine, and we're going to use a deployment template for this because we may need to deploy many virtual machines, and we can do that all in the context of a JavaScript object notation or JSON template. And we never, ever want to expose something sensitive like the default administrator password in plain text in our source code. I'm going to define the value, and I'll leave everything else at the default and click Create. It's easy as that. Now, some points about your secrets in your Key Vault. You can change them over time by creating versions. You can schedule backups of your secrets. And if you go into the secret, as long as you have proper privileges, you can show the underlying secret value. I'm choosing a high security password, password, password. And yes, of course, I'm joking. <laughs> now, I want to show you how we can use Key Vault in two contexts. First, let's go over to Visual Studio, and I've loaded up a deployment template. Now, again, I need to be careful because AZ900 is focused on technical and non-technical people. Essentially, what we're looking at is Visual Studio, which is the primary development environment in Azure. Azure does support non-Microsoft development tools, but this is the standard one for Microsoft. And if you've never seen JSON format before, you should. If you're going to be doing anything substantial with Azure, you should get comfortable with it. It's a way to represent data, uses double-quoted strings, colons, and then double-quoted values. It's meant to be a much easier format to work with than, say, XML. At any rate, I want to show you the template definition here. Again, this template defines the deployment of one or more virtual machines in Azure. And here in the parameters section of the file, there's a parameter called admin password that uses the data type secure string. That's what we normally assign to secret data in our deployment templates. This is going to be the password for the built-in default administrator account on that Azure virtual machine. Now, a good practice when you're deploying to Azure using these ARM templates is to set a separate JSON file aside to pass in parameter values. This makes your templates much more flexible and easier to deploy. You just specify different parameters, and away you go. Now, in this parameters file, we're referencing the admin password parameter. Instead of just providing a value, which would be passed in as a string or plain text, we're going to use the reference keyword. Don't mind the squiggles. I've got some underlying validation issues. I'm using the wrong schema version, but ignore the squiggles. Instead, just look at the general flow. We're saying for the admin password, we want you to reference Azure, the key vault with this resource ID. 
and it paths down through your Azure subscription into your resource group, into the Microsoft.KeyVault resource provider. And ultimately, we get down to my AZ900 Key Vault 1. And then here's the magic, secret name. And we just referenced the name of the secret. As long as the person running this template has enough privilege to be able to fetch that secret from Azure Key Vault, we're golden. We don't have to expose any of that password in plain text. Let's come back to where we left off in the Azure portal. The other use case I want to show you, let me switch over to virtual machines, is where we want to encrypt the operating system and data disks of a particular VM using Azure Disk Encryption. I'm going to pick on my Windows Server 2019 virtual machine called Win1, and here we'll come down under Settings to Disks, and we can do this all within the Azure portal. It's really easy. We'll come over to the toolbar and click Encryption. We specify which disks to encrypt. In my case, I know that this VM only has one disk, the OS disk, so I'll select that. And once again, here we go. Native integration between managed disks in Azure and our Azure Key Vault. I'm going to use this selector here by clicking this link. Let's choose the appropriate Key Vault from the list. And we're going to create a new drive encryption key. I'm going to call it Win1 Drive Encryption. Azure knows about the key type and key size, etc. So I'm going to leave all of the other properties at the default and click Create. I'm going to create a new version. I get a version ID, and then I'm going to click Select and then Save to complete the process. We have to verify we want to do this. Now notice this says, do you want to encrypt and restart? That's important to get that sanity check because if you have people actively using that server, you don't want to make this action during the work day or the work night because you're going to cause a denial of service. But in my case, I know we're clear to go. So once this is finished, it'll take a while to finish, but we could go back to the key vault, to the keys section, and we'll find that key safely stored in Key Vault. For learning resources, you can check out the Azure Key Vault docs. My shortcut URL for that is timw.info forward slash akv1. And if you're an IT professional and you want to know more about how to integrate Azure Key Vault secrets into your template deployments, check out timw.info forward slash akv2. Great stuff. I hope you're enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying teaching it. Please leave comments and let me know what you think. You can also follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. My full-time employer is Pluralsight. I have lots and lots of long-form courses there, and my colleagues are great as well. TimW.info forward slash PS. And lastly, my website is TechTrainerTim.com. All the best to you. Thanks very much, and take care.